Hey guys, it's Jim. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching. I've been getting a lot of questions about Luminar 2018 and people are saying, hey, I've got 2017, should I upgrade? Or, hey, I've got Lightroom, you know, should I move over to Luminar and start using that? And my opinion, of course, is yes, you should upgrade. And I thought I'd put together what I consider the 10 reasons to upgrade to Luminar 2018. So let's get started. Okay, reason number one is pricing. Uh, during this pre-order period, uh, until November 16th, you can get it for $39 if you're a current user, which is a screaming deal. Plus you get some bonus offers like some presets and some LUT files and uh, a one-year membership to Smug Mug. If you're not a current user, you can get it for $59. Still a great deal when you consider all the power of Luminar 2018. So I think that's reason number one is pricing. Reason number two is the user interface. It's been updated and streamlined. It's been simplified and yet the power and the flexibility of the tool is, is even improved. And so you've got a, a simplified user interface, you got presets here, you got tools here, you got all your filters over here, you can get to layers real easily and add new layers if, if you'd like to. So I love the UI, I think it's simplified and really what it does, it gives you more space to look at your photo and, th and that's really what it's about to me. So that's number two. Number three. That is the presets. You've got a lot of different presets that are built in. You have a number of categories here. Now, I've got some of my own preset packs in here, but you have the ability to create your own custom presets and save them over here in the user preset uh, page uh, or tab. But you've got all these great presets. You can just come in here and click one and say, boom, there's a edit to my photo. But one of the reasons I like the, uh, the new version so much is I many times will stack presets on multiple layers, which would entail me going over here, adding a layer, and then coming back to presets and opening it, finding one and stacking it. Now I just hit overlay preset, it adds a layer automatically, and I just go in here and I grab my preset and stick it on there. Now that's crazy colorful, I'm just kind of playing here, but the point is the uh, built-in presets and the functionality with the overlay preset button are really simple and easy and they make things streamlined for you. So that's reason number three. Okay, I'm gonna get into some filters now. So reason number four is the new filter and you've been seeing a lot of this one, it's called sun rays. And as you can see, it just allows you to place a sun on your photo. In this case, I'm gonna place it over the actual sun in the photo just to give it a little bit of an enhancement. And you can move things around. You can you know, sort of figure out what look you want to have and create your own sort of custom version of uh, you know, what you think uh, the sun ought to look like in your photo. But you can quickly go from that to that, just adding the sun rays filter. I love it. It's a lot of fun. I think people are really going to enjoy this one. And that's reason number four. Now, reason number five, that's also a filter, and that is the brilliance and warmth filter. And it's right here. And it's new, and it's very simple. You've got a vividness slider and a warmth slider. So vividness will either kind of remove the color and intensity or increase it depending on which way you go. And warmth, of course, will either cool it off going left or warm it up going right. So with just that tiny filter move, I took my sunset shot from that to that. And so that's what I like about brilliance and warmth. Very cool, very easy to use, but very powerful. And that's reason number five. Okay, I'm gonna get another filter, reason number six is a new one, uh, they're all new that I'm talking about, and that's Dodge and Burn. So Dodge and Burn allows you to selectively darken or lighten parts of the image. It just depends on what you wanna do, but it's very simple to use. You just click Start Painting, and you get this menu that says Lighten or Darken. You choose the size and strength. Let's say I wanna darken the sky a little bit, uh, and maybe I wanna reduce the strength to 25, so I don't wanna make it too dark, and maybe I wanna increase the size so I can paint more of the sky more quickly. Okay, great. So I just come over here and as you can see, the sky is getting a little bit darker. And when you're done, you say done. Let me show you the before, lighter sky, and the after, darker sky. But here's the cool thing is you can use the filter again and again and again, same filter, not adding it again, not adding a new layer, just hit start painting. And let's say this time I wanna lighten some of the water. So I say lighten and I'll say 35%. And let's say I just wanna lighten the water over here just to remove some of that shadow. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of wiping my uh, cursor over that darker part of the water and say done. So now let me show you the before. Brighter sky, darker in the corner of the water, and after. Darker sky, brighter in the corner of the water. So that's dodge and burn. Great filter, super cool, and that's reason number six. Okay, reason number seven, seven is another filter, and this one is denoise. And I love denoise. I used it a lot in the previous version, but it was slower. It was a tool which was kind of on this right-hand menu. Now the tools have been moved up here, 
but Denoise was stripped out of the tools menu and turned into a filter instead. And I gotta be honest, that's a huge improvement. It's much faster. In fact, they're calling it real-time noise reduction. In the previous version, you would add it and you'd have to choose the intensity and then move the amount slider. And then if you wanted to mask it in, you had to kind of wait for it to sort of chug through that. And now it's fast. Let me show you. You just say, and I'm going really extreme here just for demo purposes, but boom, there, it's applied. Um, and if I want to mask it in, I just get my brush and I just paint it in where I want it. Let's say I want it in the sky and I want it in the water. And there, I've just added noise reduction to the majority of that photo. Let me show you the before and the after. Very quick, very powerful, and very easy to use. But mostly, I love it because it's real time, it's a time saver, and that's a massive deal to me. Because I have a lot of photos, I don't want to edit photos, I don't want to wait and wait. So, it's lickety split, that's number seven. Number eight's also a new filter, and it's called the Develop uh, filter. Now, if uh, I've got a JPEG that I'm using for this video, but if I was using a RAW file, the filter would be called RAW Develop. And basically, as you can see, there's an adjustment tab, but you also have lens correction and transform. So you can fix pin cushion or barrel, barrel distortion with this, uh, as well as chromatic aberration and devignetting. Over here, you can adjust the verticals. So if that building was crooked, I could straighten it up a bit or if I've got shot a street scene with wide angle, sometimes the buildings will lean in certain directions. You can fix those. Very powerful. Not to mention here, maybe you want to make some uh, temperature and tint adjustments. Maybe you want to change the contrast. Maybe you want to bring up the shadows or add a little clarity. I'm just kind of winging it here on terms of these edits. But the point is, very powerful. It's a great filter. I think you'll hear a lot more about it. And that's reason number eight. Let me get to another photo. And I'm going to show you reasons nine and ten. Okay, reason number nine is LUT mapping. And you're going to hear a lot about this. A LUT stands for lookup table. It's essentially, uh, typically used, a LUT file is to apply a color grade or a specific color look to a film. Um, and I don't mean film camera uh, photos. I'm talking about cinema, like movies. And so LUTs are usually moved, uh, used in movie making to apply a color look or a color grade. Well, now you can stick a LUT file in Luminar and apply a color grade to your uh, to your photo. So you can also create LUTs. Uh, you could take presets from Lightroom and Photoshop and with specific utilities you can export them and then import them here as a LUT file. So if you have presets from other places you can very quickly stick them in here and apply that color look. So I'm just gonna uh, grab a couple here and show you. There's one, right? So there's a teal and orange. It's a dot cube file. There's two or three different uh, file extensions that are LUT files, but that's a that's a cool one. Um, let me try this drama. These are just LUTs I got for free on the web, and you can kind of see the impact it's having on the photo. It's pretty substantial, but you know not every um, uh, LUT file is going to have a huge impact. It'll just depend on what that LUT file has in it. So there's the before and there's the after. So that's a uh, LUT mapping. That's reason number nine. And then reason number ten is the last reason, and that's matte look. So this gives you the ability to fade out your photo, create sort of a vintage look. It's very powerful, and I use it a lot in tandem with the LUT mapping um, uh, filter because it's just kind of fun. So you can create this faded look. Uh, you can come in here and increase the vibrance, but you can also pick a range of tones and then increase or decrease the intensity of that range of tones. And so that may not look very good, but it definitely looks old, and that's kind of the look I'm going for. There's the before, there's the after. So matte look is number 10. So just a quick recap. You got great pricing during the pre-order period. You got a, a streamlined UI that's really intuitive and easy to use. You've got presets in the overlay preset function. You've got the sun rays filter. You've got brilliance and warmth. You've got dodge and burn. You've got real time noise reduction. You've got the raw develop filter. You've got LUT mapping and you got the matte look. So there's 10 reasons to upgrade. I think it's amazing. I think you're gonna love it and um, Check it out. I'll put a link down here below if you want to uh, go check it out on the MacFun site. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you think this video is helpful, give it a like if you would. Leave a comment if you got any questions. I'll do my best to answer them and help out. And uh, don't forget to share with your friends. And by the way, hit that subscribe button. i got plenty more coming. I've got a full tutorial series on Luminar that I'm working on. And it's coming your way as soon as I can get it done. So thanks for watching, my friends. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Adios, and see you next time.